the evening of the 7th of October 2001, just over three weeks after 9-11, the US-led invasion of Afghanistan commenced. As 50 Tomahawk cruise missiles, 17 strategic bombers of the US Air Force, and 25 fighter aircraft of the US Navy carried out the first airstrikes against military installations across the country. Within three days, the Taliban's air defense systems, in addition to their small air force, had been greatly reduced, thus paving the way for a much larger and intense air offensive to be mounted, as the US Army's official history details. After the first day, strikes targeted Taliban tanks and artillery, as well as training facilities. By the end of the first week of their air campaign, coalition aircraft had dropped over 1,500 bombs and munitions of various types. As the second week began, AC-130 gunships and F-15E Strike Eagles joined the fray. With the bulk of the primary targets destroyed or damaged, the coalition target list expanded to focus on emerging targets or targets of opportunity. The reduction of the Taliban air defense capabilities and the expansion of the air offensive opened the way for coalition ground troops to deploy into Afghanistan itself. At the direction of General Tommy Franks, the commander of the US Central Command, the first of these deployments was carried out on the 19th of October 2001, when US Special Operations Forces launched an air assault into southern Afghanistan. This assault began that evening when 199 US Rangers of ANC companies of the 3rd Battalion, the 75th Ranger Regiment, took off from Azira Island in Amman on board four C-130 transport aircraft or the 16th Special Operations Wing. Collectively, this group was designated as Task Force 375 and their target, known as Objective Rhino, was a remote airfield in Helmand Province which American intelligence had identified as being a small Taliban outpost garrisoned by around 20 enemy fighters. To Task Force 375 was given the mission of not only capturing this airfield, but then holding it so that a follow-on group of rangers and Delta Force operators could land, refuel and rearm before continuing on to their own objective, which was a compound near the city of Kandahar personally owned by the head of the Taliban, Mullah Mohammed Omar. With these orders, Task Force 375 flew out across the Arabian Sea and made landfall over Afghanistan at around 2300 on the 19th of October. At the head of the force was a small team of pathfinders who landed in the vicinity of the target and marked out the drop zone for the two Ranger companies. Not long afterwards, US Air Force B-2 strategic bombers dropped a handful of 2,000-pound laser-guided bombs onto two enemy-occupied buildings adjacent to the airfield whilst AC-130 gunships opened fire on known Taliban positions in the area. As a result of this preliminary aerial bombardment, 11 Taliban fighters were eliminated, and a further 9 fled from the area. Then, at around 23.15, the four C-130 transport aircraft arrived above the DZ, and the green light was given for the men of ANC companies to commence their drop onto Objective Rhino. The following footage was released by the US Department of Defense and shows the Rangers parachuting onto the airfield. The airborne drop onto Rhino was an overwhelming success, and besides two Rangers who sustained injuries when they landed on rocky terrain, both ANC companies were on the ground in good order and moving off to their assigned objectives. By 23.30, A Company had established their defensive perimeter around the airfield, while C Company had gained control over a wall compound to the southwest, meaning that within 15 minutes of the drop, Objective Rhino was in American hands. During that 15-minute period, the only enemy resistance to have been encountered came first from a lone Taliban fighter who was killed when he attempted to engage the rangers as they moved off from the DZ, and then from a convoy of Taliban vehicles which was seen approaching the American perimeter. Once a positive identification had been made that these vehicles are hostile units, one of the supporting AC-130 gunships opened up and neutralized the threat. Following the capture of Rhino, Task Force 375 moved on to Phase 2 of its operation, as the four C-130s that had initially carried the Rangers 
touched down on the airfield and acted as stationary refueling points for the incoming Ranger Delta Force group that was set to raid the compound near Kandahar. This group, embarked on four Chinook helicopters, arrived at Rhino at around 23.35, and after a few minutes on the ground, refueling and rearming, the Chinooks took off once more and resumed their flight to Kandahar. Thereafter, Task Force 375 was ordered to remain in position until the Kandahar group had completed its raid. This was achieved by 0400 on the 20th of October, and after the Chinooks had refueled at Rhino for a second time, the men of A and C companies re-embarked onto the C-130s and extracted themselves out from the area. By mid-morning on the 20th of October 2001, Task Force 375 had returned to base at Mazira Island. In explaining the impact of the raid on Objective Rhino, the US Army's official history states, The operation to capture Objective Rhino was designed to have as much of a psychological impact as a military one. The loss of the airfield did not have any meaningful military effect on the Taliban's war effort. However, the operation was meant to have a significant influence on the thinking of the political and military leadership of the Taliban. The raid demonstrated that the Taliban was powerless to prevent the coalition military command from focusing land forces on any target within the borders of Afghanistan at the time of its choosing. The south of the country was supposed to be secure, but these raids proved to the Taliban and the country's population that it wasn't. Meanwhile, in conjunction with the assault on Rhino, the 3rd Battalion, the 75th Ranger Regiment, executed another operation 170 kilometers to the south at Dalbandin in Pakistan. With the permission of the Pakistani government and support from the Pakistani military, this operation was launched on the night of the 19th of October and involved 26 Rangers of the battalion's B Company landing at Dalbandin's airport. Here, they were tasked with establishing a forward base from which support could be provided to A and C companies in the event that they ran into trouble at Rhino. However, as the insertion onto the airport's runway was made, one of the MH-60 Blackhawk helicopters, carrying B Company, made a hard landing, lost one of its wheels, and rolled over onto its side, causing some of the onboard rangers to either be thrown from the aircraft or become trapped underneath the Blackhawk itself. As a result of the crash, five rangers became wounded, among them were Specialist John Edmonds and Private First Class Christopher Stonisifer, both of whom would sadly succumb to their wounds later that night as they were evacuated to a nearby hospital. For the 75th Ranger Regiment, the loss of Specialist Edmonds and Private First Class Stonisifer was a huge blow, especially in the wake of the successful air assault onto Objective Rhino. For the broader US military, they were the first of some 2,456 servicemen and women who were to lay down their lives during the 20-year campaign in Afghanistan. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you never miss one of my future videos.